Hi, welcome, and I hope you're doing well. In this video here, I'll be doing a step-by-step -step on how to do a port forwarding in this D-Link router. Let me show you the model here. This is D-Link DSR250. It comes with eight ports, and this one is for the internet service provider. So if you have a charter, Spectrum, or any of your local state internet provider, you will plug into this WAN port. The rest of the other eight ports, you can plug your printer, your computer, laptops, whatever devices, even your security camera can go into this, um, this router here. This D-Link router does not come with Wi-Fi, meaning that it doesn't broadcast any Wi-Fi in this, in, this, in this router. If you need to have a Wi-Fi for your purpose, I recommend you to install an access point, maybe like an Ubiquiti um, or a different brand that you can just broadcast Wi-Fi itself not a secondary router you do not want to have two router to have any ip conflicts or any double net nat double net um, in your setup all right so let me talk about this port one this port one here is connected directly to my computer and um, i'm getting an ip address as you can see the the lights are flashing and the power light is green all right so let me go ahead and switch the uh, camera into my monitor screen so this router here speed up an IP address 192.168.10.1 uh, on the very top here if you can see. So if you put in this IP address in your uh, browser, it can be Google Chrome, Firefox, Microsoft Edge, your preference, doesn't matter. So put in the IP address, the router by default is 192.168.10.1. Uh, once I put in the IP address, you can see this warning sign here. You can just ignore that warning sign. It doesn't really um, mean much. So what you want to do is you have to click advance and continue with 192.168.10.1. Go ahead and do that. It'll bring you to the login page. What you want to do is you put in the password uh, and username. So it's admin admin. That's the default. And if you, I recommend you to change the, uh, the username and password, but for this purpose, I'm not going to change it. I'm just going to show it to you uh, what it is to um, to get in. All right, so this is a dashboard, like a status. It show you the traffic coming into your router, uh, traffic over overall through HTTP or HTTPS, email, DNS, WAN port here, how much megabytes being downloaded, how much megabytes downloaded on WAN port number two. So there's no WAN port two in this router, but I think the uh, interface for the D-Link is just pretty much standard for, for everybody to use. Okay, it also show you the CPU utilization and memory utilization as well. So let me do a quick jump into a few explanation before we go into the uh, port forwarding here. Go to the network tab on the second here you can see when one settings when one settings is actually referring to your internet provider so if you know if you have a static ip address if your internet service provider say hey your static ip address is going to be uh, i don't know 10.20.10.88 um, and the subnet mass they're going to give it to you 255 255 255 or 252 uh, I'm not sure. This is just a fake IP address right now. I'm not putting a real one here. I'm just educating people that if your internet provider provides you um, an IP address, you should just follow their instruction. They will tell you the IP is such, the subnet mass is as such, the default gateway, and the domain name server. It could be, uh, I don't know. It's going to be as different. The DNS is not the same as the gateway. Uh, it, I'm just going to make up something 66, 77, 88, 99. Okay. And uh, the default one, you can do 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 if you want to. All right. So uh, majority of you guys, if you do not know what it is, uh, if the internet service provider did not mention anything about static or you did not request a static IP address for your home or residential internet purpose, you, you want to select DHCP. A dynamic IP which is an automatic uh, IP address will be generated by the router all right, all right let's move on to the next if you want to go to the LAN settings here uh, the LAN settings here is pretty much control the 
internal part of your computers, right? The uh, the local area network. So this one, IP address 192.168.10.1 is referring to the router, right? So the router is number one. That means it's assigned to this router. Therefore, we can log in by using this IP address on the top here. Okay. And then the subnet message is 255.255.255.0. Now the DHCP server, it spit out the... Uh, uh, a number you can give a range starting IP address is one which is the router the router has taken the number one and it can go all the way up to 254 and the range is from 1 to 254 if you plug in a second computer it would go to 192.168.10.2 if you have a third computer it will be 192.168.10.3 so on and so forth and all the way up to 254 devices or computer you can plug in using in this router here okay and the default gateway is uh, controlled by the router which is 192.168.10.1 or you can put a different dns gateway if you like all right and the list time 744 hours i think there is more than enough to list for this ip address if you want it to be shorter you can range it down to one two three hours whichever hours you like and that would release the IP address uh, if the computer is offline for like three hours and then the IP address will be released for other people to use but 744 I think this is uh, more than enough all right let's jump to what we are trying to do here is the port forwarding let's get back to the main topic so the first thing I like to do is go over to the security and go to custom services now um, just give an example because you may want to talk about uh, RDP. RDP stands for Remote Desktop Protocol. Uh, if you try to do a remote in, meaning that if you step out for vacation or if you knock on wood, if you're being self-monitor or quarantine yourself and you try to remote into your home computer or business computer, you try to work, you need to open up your port so that the router can direct the traffic into your workstation. Therefore, you can just work remotely uh, from home or from elsewhere all right so i'm pretty sure you know what uh you're trying to get to like maybe open up the port for your security camera if you install uh a, you know a security camera for home or for business and you want to view it on your phone or if you want to view it on your ipad uh, you need to open up the port so that the traffic can go out and see the camera lens and able to view the camera from your smartphone all right so again let's go to custom services sorry i've been keep sidetracked a lot and trying to explain i'm trying to cover everything in one video here i know it's been too much education for you uh, but if you have any comment any question comment below all right i'll be more than happy to answer your question uh, i'm more than happy to make a video for you just for your question if it fits in this channel and uh, do not forget to give me a like and subscribe if you haven't and hit the notification bell all right thanks for liking the video uh, in advance and let's continue so go to security go to custom services here you want to click on add new custom service in here you want to give it a name so let me say i want to say um work from let's just say work from home okay that's the name i'm going to give it work from home okay work from home i'm going to use both TCP and UDP, but technically I just need a DCP. I do not need a UDP for this purpose. Uh, the 3389 to remote in is under TCP, not a UDP. Or if you're not too sure, you can select both. Both meaning it runs on TCP and UDP the same time. Okay, let's go ahead and select both since we are not too sure. Um, let's click for this one, the source start port always be one and the source source finish port is always 65535. Do not ask me why is the number one and this is 65535. Uh, what I understand is that you need to put in that two numbers there. Uh, that is because it is how it is. All right. Uh, I mean, um, I mean, what? Let me make it bigger for you. I, I think the screen was too small. All right, so um, that is how the router for D-Link to be being being set up. You need to put in one, 
and here is 65535. Now this destination starting port is the port that you want to put in for what you need, right? So if I want to do an RDP like remote desktop into my workstation, the RDP by default using Windows is 3389 and the finish port is 3389. So it's not a range. If you have a range, you can put a range from 3389 to maybe 4000 if you have a range if you need. But for my purpose, 3389 is only one IP address, sorry, one port that I need to be open for the uh, remote purpose. You follow me so far? So, okay, so we're going to do a few examples here. At least you get a, get a hang of it. All right, so 3389 is the port I like, and this is what it is. I click save. Let's do another one port open. Okay, so we're going to talk about, we're going to do something about, um, camera so that is a good good um, example if you want to do a camera so let's just say i bought a camera from costco right or from walmart and the name of the camera i'm just going to say uh walmart costco cam okay i'm just going to name that and this here by default again we need to put in those numbers just put it in trust me it will work and let's just say the camera is, uh, those camera is very high numbers. So usually they go to 37,777. Okay, just put 37777. And uh, I'm just making up the numbers here. So whatever camera that you bought, you want to look at the, the manual. They'll tell you what port to use. Refer to the port number and use those port numbers. Okay, so go ahead and put in those numbers and click save. So far, we have created two um, ports that needs to be open in a router. Now, once the port is created, and then now the next step you want to do is to allow the firewall to pass through. So give it a rules in a firewall. So go to firewall, security, firewall rules, and click on it. Now here, you can click. So the next step after you do that, you, you need to click here. It says add new ipv4 all right so here from zone meaning from what zone the zone is you want to be from the van you want to open from the van to what zone to your local area network you follow me so far so you're actually doing something like here so you're doing like the so what it says from when right so we're opening from the zone when internet provider come in to your router do is magic and then to the zone of the land this so this is your land port whichever land you plug in for your security camera or for your computer uh, to do the rdp all right so let me move it back to the screen here so this is the um, zone is from van to land services here these are default by the router that they give it for you um we are not going to use them because we don't need any of that. We want to use the one that we created, right? So we created this called work from home. So you select that. This is what I want to do. And then I want to say always allowed. Okay. Or you can do by schedule if you want. Let's just say you know that you're going to work from 8 to 5. Do that local time. 8 to 5, it allows you to do the remote. Other than that, you will just block and will not allow the traffic to come in so you can do by schedule or you can do by always 24 7 allow the traffic to come in so for this purpose i'm going to do allow always to come in and this here destination net settings internal ip address this here referring to your computer ip address so since this is called work from home i have a computer plugged in and my ip address on that computer the workstation just so you know you're not seeing it in this video here i'm just verbally mentioning it out to you okay so that computer is 182.168.10.50 all right so dot 50 is the computer for me to remote in and that should be all i need to worry about i don't have to do anything else i don't have to enable the port you don't have to do that because we already create a custom port and we already allow to come in so we do not have to do this port forwarding just make sure this port forwarding is written as off 
All right, you follow me so far? Okay, so go ahead and click save. Uh, session expired. Okay, I think I talked too much and the section expired. So let's go ahead and get, get it going again. Faster this time. So go to firewall rules. Okay, so go ahead and click that. We want to do the when to land. We want to go ahead and select the work from home. That's what I want. Always allowed. Okay, and the IP address is dot fifty, and I click save. That's it. That's all I need to do to allow the traffic. Okay, so operation success. Remember, we have another IP uh, port to be open. Three seven seven seven. Uh, that is for the camera. So go ahead and select the camera here. Walmart Costco camera, the one that I got. Always allowed. And that camera is 192.168.10.99. So that is my camera IP address. So your IP address could be different. But for my case, mine is 99. You need to make sure you check yourself what IP address you have now. Okay. I just want to tell you these are all the settings. Make sure it's off, dedicated to when, and always allowed. Click save. Operation succeeded. Come on. All right. All right. So it said operation succeeded. I have two being open and this is it. That's how you do the port forwarding. It's just as simple as that. Uh, nothing else you need to do. So I know there's a lot more other stuff here. They talk about a VPN, right? If you want to learn about VPN. Uh, if you want to learn about the, um, what else, uh, VLAN. So there's a lot more settings in this router here you can do. Um, just so you know that I'm not going to cover everything in this video. It's such a long video to do that. Uh, but if you need any help, just question in the comment below. I'm more than happy to answer those questions. So other than that, please like the video if you learned something today. I really appreciate you for doing that. Uh, until next time, please take care. Bye now.